In the late 90s, Enron was praised as a beacon of American innovation, yet behind closed doors, a sinister plot unfolded. Executives wove a complex tapestry of deception, leading to one of history's most notorious accounting scandals. This financial house of cards crumbled, wiping out a staggering $74 billion in shareholder wealth. Join us on a journey through the rise and fall of Enron, unraveling the tangled threads that expose the fragility of fortunes built on fraud rather than ethics. In the late 20th century, Enron Corporation emerged as a powerhouse in the energy sector, solidifying its position as one of the most innovative and successful companies in the United States. Founded in 1985, the company quickly became a pioneer in the energy trading and utilities industry, leveraging its unique business model and aggressive expansion strategies. Enron's rise was fueled by its adept ability to exploit the deregulation of the energy markets. The company capitalized on the newfound opportunities by transitioning from a traditional energy supplier to a trading and financial services entity. This shift allowed Enron to navigate through complex markets and engage in speculative ventures, making it a key player in the industry. What set Enron apart was its reputation for innovation. The company embraced a daring approach to business, pushing the boundaries of conventional energy companies. It pioneered the extensive use of special purpose entities, SPEs, complex financial structures that allowed Enron to keep debt off its balance sheet, creating an illusion of financial health. This financial engineering contributed to the company's meteoric rise on Wall Street and its status as a darling of investors. At the helm of Enron were influential figures who played crucial roles in shaping the company's destiny. Kenneth Lay, the founder and chairman, provided leadership and vision, while Jeffrey Skilling, the ambitious CEO, was the driving force behind Enron's transformation into a trading giant. Andrew Fastow, the CFO, was the mastermind behind the intricate financial schemes that appeared to sustain Enron's prosperity. Enron's seemingly unstoppable ascent came to an abrupt halt in the early 2000s as the company's intricate web of financial deceptions began to unravel. Enron's rapid expansion into various markets and projects marked the beginning of its downfall. The company, once solely focused on energy trading, diversified into broadband, water, and other non-traditional ventures. This diversification, however, stretched Enron's resources thin and increased its exposure to financial risks. As Enron ventured into riskier territories, signs of financial instability started to emerge. The company's stock prices, once soaring, began to fluctuate wildly, reflecting growing concerns among investors. The intricate financial structures, designed to mask the company's mounting debt, were becoming increasingly difficult to sustain. Amidst the growing unease within Enron, Sharon Watkins, a vice president in the company, played a pivotal role by sounding the alarm. In 2001, she wrote a now infamous memo to Kenneth Lay, warning of accounting irregularities and the impending financial catastrophe. Watkins's courageous act marked a crucial turning point, setting in motion the events that would expose one of the largest corporate frauds in history. At the heart of Enron's colossal collapse was the intricate web of SPEs and off-balance sheet accounting. Enron utilized these financial tools to conceal its mounting debt and project a facade of financial strength. SPEs, essentially separate legal entities, allowed Enron to keep substantial amounts of debt off its balance sheet. This off-balance sheet accounting not only obscured the true financial health of the company, but also provided a false sense of security to investors and analysts. Enron's financial ingenuity extended to the use of mark-to-market -market accounting, a practice that involves valuing assets based on their estimated market values. While this method is common in certain industries, Enron took it to unprecedented levels. The company applied mark-to-market -market accounting to projects that were still in their infancy, projecting future profits as if they were already realized. This aggressive accounting practice inflated Enron's profits on paper, creating an illusion of sustained growth and financial prosperity. In reality, these profits were often speculative and far from guaranteed. The accounting giant Arthur Anderson, entrusted with auditing Enron's financial statements, played a pivotal role in the scandal. Rather than acting as an independent watchdog, Anderson became complicit in approving Enron's questionable accounting practices, 
The firm not only failed to detect the flaws in Enron's financial reporting, but also actively participated in crafting and implementing some of the deceptive accounting strategies. This collusion between Enron and its auditors eroded the fundamental trust that investors place in financial institutions. As the truth about Enron's financial deception came to light, the consequences were swift and severe. In a matter of weeks, Enron's stock, once trading at over $90 per share, collapsed to mere cents. Shareholders, including employees who had invested their retirement savings in Enron stock, faced devastating losses. The sharp decline in stock value wiped out billions of dollars in shareholder equity and shattered the confidence of investors who had believed in Enron's seemingly unassailable success. Unable to weather the storm of its own financial misconduct, Enron filed for bankruptcy in December 2001. This marked one of the largest bankruptcies in U.S. history, with debts exceeding $60 billion. The bankruptcy had a cascading effect on the market, causing shockwaves that reverberated through the energy sector and beyond. Financial institutions that were entangled with Enron faced significant losses, and the broader market experienced increased skepticism about corporate governance and financial transparency. In the aftermath of Enron's collapse, regulatory bodies, including the Securities and Exchange Commission, launched extensive investigations to uncover the extent of the fraud. The media played a crucial role in exposing the scandal, with investigative journalism bringing to light the deceptive accounting practices and corporate misconduct. The Enron case became a watershed moment, leading to increased scrutiny of corporate financial practices and ultimately paving the way for regulatory reforms. Jeffrey Skilling, the CEO of Enron, played a pivotal role in shaping the corporate culture that ultimately led to the scandal. Skilling was a driving force behind Enron's transformation into a trading giant, advocating for aggressive expansion into various markets. His leadership style was marked by a focus on financial performance, often at the expense of ethical considerations. Skilling encouraged a culture that prioritized the appearance of success, fostering an environment where employees felt pressured to meet unrealistic financial targets. His involvement in creating a culture that valued financial engineering over transparency contributed significantly to the unraveling of Enron. Kenneth Lay, the founder and chairman of Enron, was also a central figure in the scandal. While Lay portrayed himself as a visionary leader, he faced criticism for his lack of oversight and failure to intervene as Enron's financial irregularities escalated. Lay was found to have engaged in questionable practices, including selling significant amounts of his Enron stock while encouraging employees to buy more. His actions raised questions about his awareness of the company's true financial condition and his role in perpetuating the deceptive practices that led to Enron's downfall. Andrew Fasto, the chief financial officer of Enron, was the mastermind behind many of the financial schemes that masked the company's true financial position. Fasto created the complex network of special purpose entities that allowed Enron to conceal debt and inflate profits. These financial structures, while technically legal, were used to manipulate Enron's financial statements and deceive investors. Fasto's orchestration of these schemes demonstrated a level of financial engineering that contributed significantly to the scandal and ultimately led to criminal charges against him. The legal fallout from the Enron scandal was substantial, with key players facing criminal charges and convictions. Jeffrey Skilling was convicted on multiple counts, including fraud, conspiracy, and insider trading, leading to a lengthy prison sentence. Kenneth Lay was also found guilty on multiple charges but passed away before sentencing, complicating the legal aftermath. Andrew Fasto cooperated with authorities, providing testimony that contributed to convictions of other Enron executives. The legal proceedings sent a strong message about accountability at the highest levels of corporate leadership. Arthur Anderson, Enron's auditing firm, faced severe consequences in the wake of the scandal. The firm was charged with obstruction of justice for its role in shredding Enron-related documents. In 2002, Arthur Anderson was found guilty, leading to its dissolution. The collapse of one of the big five accounting firms sent shockwaves through the industry and raised questions about the accountability of auditors in detecting and preventing corporate fraud. 
In response to the Enron scandal and other corporate accounting scandals of the early 2000s, the U.S. Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act in 2002. This landmark legislation aimed to strengthen corporate governance and financial reporting. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act introduced stringent requirements for financial disclosures, internal controls, and the independence of auditors. It also established the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board, PCAOB, to oversee the auditing profession. The enactment of Sarbanes-Oxley marked a significant shift in the regulatory landscape, emphasizing transparency, accountability, and ethical conduct in corporate governance. The Enron scandal stands as a stark reminder of the ethical implications associated with unchecked corporate ambition. If you enjoyed learning about this multi-billion dollar scandal, you may find our video on legendary day trader Jesse Livermore equally fascinating. Known for spectacular wins and losses in the Roaring Twenties stock market, Livermore's extreme risk-taking also ultimately led to his downfall. Thank you for being part of our community, and until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep making history.